everybody. Let's simulate a parallel RLC circuit here in multi-sim. So here I already started off with a resistor, inductor, and capacitor. So now let's put a source. So let's get a clock current over here. Okay, so let's wire that in. All right, and then for we need to put a ground somewhere. Okay, and then let's just set this at one amp at a frequency of 100 hertz. Okay, because I kind of already know what I'm expecting for the frequency response for this RLC. So that's I'm kind of telling you in advance. Let's stick with this frequency. Okay, now let's measure the current coming out of the source. Okay, so the multi-sim kind of defaults. Anything vertical is going down. Anything horizontal is going to the right. So you could, I mean, instead of putting it here, you just put it here. If you put your current source here, but you actually want it to go the other way, you could just double click it and then it brings up the menu over here on the right and you could just, so you're here, flip current measurement. It just turns it the other way like this. Okay, and then we wanna measure the current going through the inductor. So I'm gonna add another probe over here. Okay, so we're measuring the current coming out of the source, which is a square wave, and then the current going through the inductor. Okay, so you see up here on the upper left, which simulation type? Let's go with interactive. So it's just gonna run continuously. Um, all right, so let's run it. Okay, so looks kind of like this. And then you see, like if you move your cursor by the vertical axis, you can, if you like scroll your mouse wheel, you can kind of change the scale like this. So when you're working on an oscilloscope, that's exactly how it works. There's gonna be a dial where you can adjust the scale of the vertical axis. And then you see like if I hover my mouse down, see hovering here, see how the arrows are like vertical? If I move my mouse over here, if I scroll, now it adjusts the time axis, the horizontal axis. Okay, so you just kind of fiddle with the scaling. So it looks, and then see how you can drag this like this. Just fiddle around with the scaling until it looks good, where you can see what's going on. So here I'm just gonna have, I'm gonna look at two periods worth of this signal. And already you see how the green one is the, the source, and then the blue is the response of the current going through the inductor. So you see how this is overdamped. Okay, now I'm here, I'm gonna adjust the resistor. So I'm gonna increase the resistance and watch what happens to the response. So I'm just gonna drag the slider. Okay, look. See, I'm gonna zoom in a little more in fact. How about, let's just look at one period's worth. Okay, All right, so I'm increasing the slider. Look at what's happening to the response. It's still overdamped, but you see how, like when the resistor is smaller, it takes longer for it to settle. And then I make the resistor larger and then it settles quicker. And what we're looking at here, this is actually the natural response over here. And then foreshadowing the step response looks like this. I mean, maybe not surprising. Okay, so as I continue to increase the resistance, see how it reaches its target quicker. Okay, let me continue to increase the resistance. Oh, okay, look what happens. At some point, it overshoots the signal. 
and then see how it kind of bounces around like that. So this is under damped. Let me continue to incre increase, see? So there's some kind of like point where, let's see, let me go backwards this way. So as I continue to decrease the resistance, see it's still under damped, still under damped. At some point, it's like right in between being under damped and over damped. So there's some point where there's no overshoot. Uh, maybe like right over, right around there, right? So that would be critically damped. So you can actually just solve for it, right? Because critically damped happens where alpha equals omega, the Nieper frequency is the same as the undamped natural frequency, and you can just solve for it. But here you can also just kind of adjust to find it kind of experimentally. Right, like that and then look at it, it really tracks the input signal the source not too bad right if i if i had too much resistance then look there's under down it's an under damped response too little resistance it's an over damped response and what you want just depends on the design parameters of say your client whatever your client wants for the project you're working on Okay, so hope that was helpful. Let's check out the series RLC next week. Okay, so see you on the next video.